All right, this is my uh, second video log. Um, it'd be a good thing for you guys to know something a little bit about me. I mean, some of you guys work with me, but the regular YouTube people don't know anything about me. Um, I'm a geek. I'll admit it. Um, there's, you know, there's two type of geeks. The geeks that do any, everything that's geeky, and then they have the snobby geeks. Uh, I was in that category. They're the people who try to maintain that normal s normality of being a regular person, not going too far in the geekitude. Uh, like, years ago, my friends basically uh, talked me into playing um, a pen and paper role playing game, but before that, I was like, Mages and Monsters? I don't want to play that. You know, Dungeons and Dragons, because there's that, all that social stigma according to um, this connected with it. Uh, they wrote me up a character. They threw me at it. It actually was pretty damn good. Um, they weren't expecting me uh, to pretty much put this in perspective. Um, they gave me a former KGB officer that had magical powers. And was dying of stomach cancer. I actually took and killed the main villain and became the primary villain of the actual game. They were not seeing that. Yeah, also it's turning into uh, basically blowing up a random 7-Eleven. Yeah, that was that was fun. Um, most people when they hear of pen and paper role playing games, they think about Dungeons and Dragons. That's like the most easiest generic. I'm, I, I'll play Pathfinder, which is kind of a variation of it. Um, White Wolf is great. Uh, you probably don't know what White Wolf is. I'll explain real quick what White Wolf is. Uh, back when Dungeons and Dragons became popular, someone actually said, why don't I do horror? And he started White Wolf and created Vampire Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, and Mage. I think it was the Ascension. Yeah, Mage the Ascension. So you had this very dark, gritty system where you could do more. You can, let's say, you're creative, do whatever. They create Scion, and I, I love Scion. And what I'm going to do in this video is just go through a few little bits and pieces of why in Scion, apparently, I am one of the most dangerous mofos. Not because of power, it's just because of sheer anarchy I cause. The, be the first thing, you pick a pa uh, to develop a Scion character, you pick a Pantheon. I picked the Tuatha Dee to name the Celtic Gods. I'm Irish, my ancestors spoke a really funny language that had a lot of vowels in the wrong places. Hey, I'm good with that! There's also the the um, Greek pantheon, there's also the Devas, which are the Indian, you know, and then there's the Persians. Um, there's also the Aesir, which are the Nords. Um, what you do is you take, you first off pick that, then you have uh, attributes you put in, in, you get a certain amount of dots, which like four dots of strength means you're strong. Well, you get the idea. First physical, social, and scarly. You divide those dots you're given up and put them in there. Um, you get birthrights and boons. Boons allow you, like, let's say, I picked Sir Nunos, Celtic God of the Hunt, so I have a lot of animal boons. I started taking, talking to animal, like, predatory animals, but yet again, my friends are like, there's no, there's no boon that allows you to talk to a broader group, so I invested in a custom boon that allows me to do that. They allow me to do that. Also, I took, talked to vermin. So, I've talked to roaches, rats. Yeah. You're, you're probably wondering, this is boring, but wait, wait get, let me get to it. Uh, the birthrights, you get a certain amount of dots, and you can figure out what you can do. I created some silver short swords that can be invisible. Work for me. <laughs> Scratchity scratch. Uh, a magic Beretta that never runs out of ammo. And my my personal my personal favorite. Uh, oh yeah, I had a little armlet that allowed me to do my have access to my peer views like my beast stuff. I had a little dog whistle 
wooden dog whistle that allows me to summon a badger the size of a grizzly bear and a creature called the Loiger. The Loiger is a Lovecraftian monster of the Cthulhu mythos. You don't know what Cthulhu mythos are, the best way to say, um, the Cthulhu mythos are... Dealing with de demons from hell would be a lot more pleasant. Um, the Loiger is kind of like a, a Welsh creature. It's uh, like a dragon without wings or four eyes. It turns into gas like a genie. So, there I am, this crazy park, well, this park ranger, the rest of the group, after dealing with me, thinks I'm insane. Because I don't think outside the box. I've actually changed, uh, got our uh, game master to change the plot multiple times, because apparently I do stuff. I've, we were all at one time, or were supposed to basically sneak into this museum uh, during this uh, event, because apparently there's a gem on auction. There's a gem on... Uh, what? Oh. Oh. For the people who are not watching this, or oh, for who are watching this and don't see behind the scenes, um, let's just say... Okay, you want me to tell them the cat's having horrific, horrific flatulence? I know that would be a good thing to have edited out, just but for the whole natural thing we're going for here, and the hu it, oh god, that's horrible. Oh, just for the comedy factor of it, we're gonna leave this in. Cat flatulence. When your c cat farts so much, they're a fire hazard. Um. So. In this in this museum, um, the uh, the group were snuck in, and all the P security forces are possessed by demons, and their whole goal is to sell this gem. They're going to buy it. Well, they're going to buy it. Um, they're trying to make it look legitimate. What do I do? Well, everyone's deliberate. I go in the bathroom, pretend I have horrible diarrhea. <laughs> oh my God! The curry hurts. Everyone runs out of the actual bathroom. I summon the roaches and basically convince them to swarm the museum. While I summon the loiger to go through the, the gas, the actual vents, as a gas, and basically bust into the vaults that have the jewels. And here's the little farter fart right here. Ugh. All right. You, you, you what? You're carrying biological chemical weapons? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Je uh, Lager busts in, is like cra breaking glass, grabbing gems one by one, looking at them. And the thing is, he has no color vision. Uh, I, but uh, everyone, all the people are being swarmed out because there's roaches up to everyone's ankles. I crash the window. The NYPD is there. What do I do? Roaches! Roaches in every orifice! I start ro rolling around on the ground. Well, uh, security forces are like, there's a dragon up there, stealing the gems. Oh, come on, we're being hacked. Go up there. Yeah, it's probably giving, uh, basically confusing, giving a computer a false image. They go up there, shit themselves, because there's a dragon there. That has a whole lot of rage and has the IQ of a bag of hammers. That's just a taste of some of the crap I've done. Uh, there was the one time where I made a garbage bag poncho and made a little garbage bag Zorro mask turned into metal summoned the badger and almost took off charging into an actual building uh, there is also uh, what I've done is I've created a roach cult that worships me as a god so now I know everything that goes on around New York City I've actually made roach pope and giving them basically like mint toothpicks to basically kill heretics. Um, another little thing, uh, we play mage where you play ma actual magic user. I, everyone's coming up with all these crazy combat guys. I wrote up a horny 17 year old that's not only, uh, he's a thyrsus, which it means he's a mage that exemplifies the powers of life. Life is He's basically physically fit, really strong. The problem is, he's a 17-year-old. He wants to become popular by learning the 
you, ba you basically get dots of arcana uh, that allow you to do what kind of magic. He has life and spirit primarily, and mind. So his goal right now is we're in one dot of m matter, so he can make alchemical hooch to basically become famous with the seniors. And also he has a bizarre fascination with different types of, um, I'll just put it bluntly, pornography. Um, Thursus, you know, bad qualities of life. Um, what he basically does is col basically collects the really weird stuff uh, just for personal research. Which is funny, our friend Lars, who is an enabler, he basically summons stuff from the abyss, which is a bad, bad place. He basically was like this, hey, oh, it comes out of nowhere. There's some donkey midget uh, amputee stuff for you. Where'd you get it? The abyss. You can just send that to back to the abyss. Uh, characters full of wrath. Uh, I love that character. Uh, we just played him in just play tests. Um, one of the times it was like a play test. But before I cut this off, um, one of the one of the things they had me do is okay, just to go up against a regular person. I mean, you know, most mages are just regular people. They just have magical powers. You cannot do magic in front of regular people. It incurs paradox. And the new, newer system of White Wolf's done, you can roll dice and mitigate Paradox. So, I'm walking down the street. I'm going to go buy a model kit at the model store. Some kid bumps into me and takes my uh, wallet. And because my character has no social skills, Hey, you! Fucked hard! So I take off running after him. Because I have all these like natural enchantments and boosts on me. So I take off, I conjure a bunch, I convince a whole bunch of birds of shit on his head. He's not phased. Alright, he decides to run behind into an alley. And what he does is he jumps over a fence. I'm there, I pull out my messenger bag, turn some, I need living tissue, so I have some the rose clippings. I turn a bunch of rose clippings into bees and send them over the fence. While I jump over the fence, like they're seeing the shit out of him. I proceed, he shoots me. He pulls a gun and shoots me. I still am okay, relatively, even though I have a wound. I proceed to beat him unconscious because I'm using, I have so many s stat buffs. I know most of you guys won't understand this, but here's where the coup de grace comes. The guy's knocked out. My friends are like, okay, now that that's over, after mitigating his paradox from the turning of the rose clipping was in the bees, and at the time... <laughs> Yes, I have fucking stupid neighbors. Fucking stupid neighbors. Um, after mitigating Paradox, because of a stupid dice roll, because at this time I'm sleepy and I'm just grabbed by so like, Wow, well, you mitigated all that Paradox. What you gonna do? He's on the ground. He's unconscious. It's probably over. You can just take your wallet. I'm going to take my wallet and I'm going to take his wallet. Okay. Now that's over. No, it isn't over. What are you going to do? I'm going to take his shoes. Why? I'm going to take his pants and underwear. What? I'm going to profusely urinate all over it. What the hell? I'm going to throw in the garbage. I'm going to heal him so he gets back. I'm going to jump over the fence, heal him at range so he gets back up, and I'm going to send more bees after him, chase him half down the street half naked. They're like, what the hell, man? Wrath. That's my negative quality. They're like, okay. I know you guys are thinking I'm a big geek. I know. This was just a test, you know. I just think you guys may think that's funny. Hey, it's better than that one time and we played, we create changeling characters and I had an incoherent ogre wrestler that basically made, modeled himself after the Ultimate Warrior from um, the WWE. And he had like a magical mask that talked. But hey, if you like this video, uh, comment, share. Hey, have a good night. I know sometimes I don't know whether I'm going to say good night, good day, and it comes out. Good day. Yeah, that's quality, but okay. Hey, well, have a good night.